Let's talk about diastasis rectus abdominis. So first, we're going to check Miss Leah here. She's about two months or three months? Three months postpartum, so about 12 weeks. We actually have not checked you at all, have we? So standard DRA test is with your knees bent, feet flat on the ground, head's nice and relaxed. And I'm just gonna start by feeling her belly, making sure I get consent. Is it okay if I check you? Yes. And I'm going to start from her xiphoid process and feel all the way down to wherever she feels comfortable, but most likely just above the pubic bone. You, skin to skin is always preferred, but you can go right on top of like these thin layer of Lulu pants. Come back up here. I like to feel under the rib cage as well. Oh, this one's a little tighter. All right, so now I'm gonna get Leah to be a little bit active. What I want you to do is curl your chin to your chest and then lift your shoulders. Ooh, these are nice and functional or active, whatever the word is you wanna use. A little, that's barely, that's like a baby finger width. How you feeling? Good. You feel any pain or discomfort? Mm -mm. Yeah, a little wider right there. You can slowly lower down, but not enough for me to complain. Um, it's also functional. You can feel like all the muscles are engaging all the way down and there's really no depth to it. Like I would say baby finger or less. The unique thing here is Leah used to be a gymnast. I mean, it's still probably in your blood. Um, so she had a rib cage flare going into even her first pregnancy. So it makes sense that it's a little wider up here and not down here. The more common DRA presentation that we see is a gap just above the belly button. Um, everything usually heals from rib cage or pubic bone to belly button. So it kind of goes in this motion. We're also gonna check Leah in the side plank position. So pick a favorite side to start with. All right. And just checking out, breathing here, making sure her spine is in alignment or that neutral spine just at like a little angle. And then all I want you to do is take a breath and drive your hips up to the ceiling and slightly forward. Here I'm feeling and it feels really good here. Woo, hey abs. And then lower down. And then we're gonna check the other side. All right, checking position first and then whenever you're ready, lift up. Yeah, this feels really good. This might even be stronger than the general assessment test and then you can relax and lay on the ground. All right, so what I wanna bring your attention to is we're looking for functionality, we're looking for width and depth, we're not looking for aesthetics. Aesthetics is kind of like an indirect result of all the rehab and intentionality we put into all the training and uh, awareness we do around movement. Be mindful of if you are somebody that is looking up DRA tests, looking up trying to heal or fix your DRA, what is it that you're looking for? Is it you're looking for a pre-baby body? Because that does not exist. Fortunately, that does not exist. You are a different human, you have evolved, you carried a human or multiples in this space. This space is going to be different, it's going to evolve, it's going to change. That's a positive thing. This postpartum body is a beautiful thing. So I'd encourage you to start paying attention to the language that you use. Are you saying fixed or healed? And what does that mean? Or join us on the other side and start using language like improved or functionality. Has my DRA improved? Am I functional? 
you know, you might be stronger than you've ever been before, eight months postpartum, three months postpartum, two years postpartum, and your midsection looks a little bit different and that's okay. You know, one thing in the rehab postpartum world is there's no consensus on what DRA is as far as measurements. There is one study that uh, studied around 80, 82 women and the range for DRA width was about 21 millimeters to 97 millimeters with the average, like the mean being around 35 millimeters. So there's a huge spectrum. Another thing to keep in mind is in the rehab world, when people are checking, it's measured by finger width. And more often than not, it's just finger width and two finger widths or more is considered DRA. And so if you think back or if you know some, like if you think about looking at a Gray's Anatomy book or somebody's abs before they had a baby or even after, like that linea alba down the middle varies on everybody. The width of that varies on everybody. So, you know, let's say Leah had a, you know, index finger width before, and now she's back to an index finger width. That may be different than me if I have a thumb width or two finger width, and now I go back to my own two finger width as I did before. Or maybe it's just different. Maybe I was a pinky finger before, and now I'm a thumb width, and everything's functional and I'm strong and I'm able to do the things I know and love and there's no signs of core or pelvic floor dysfunction. Remember, DRA is a sign and a symptom of core dysfunction, especially as we progress further in that first year postpartum. Keep that in mind. So, are you functional? Have you improved? And are you taking the proper steps in your movements and your poses? Are you breathing? Are your breathing patterns, you know, normalized? Are you breathing into your rib cage? Deep core exercises and breathing are the number one thing to improve and make DRA functional or improve the space between. So keep that in mind. That's it.